Agony of Love. Well, this movie's interesting for a few reasons. <laughs> Even beyond those two. Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob. Today I'm taking a look at The Agony of Love from 1966. This film lies more on the kinky side of Buffy, and is mostly notable for the people involved in its production. This is the directorial debut of William Rossler. Uh, he was a science fiction author and cartoonist. Uh, he won the Hugo Award four times, the Nebula Award one time. Yes, yeah, so he was like, respectable. You may have heard of that short story, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream by Harlan Ellison. Yeah, well the title of that story comes from a William Rossler cartoon. Uh, Ellison used it with permission. But being respectable is not what gets you on this channel. William Rossler's movie is on this channel because in addition to being respectable, William Rossler was also a pornographer. In fact, if you want to see one of his softcore films, check out Suburban Pagans. <laughs> that movie is... Wow, the women in that movie are just unbelievable. And William Rossler was clearly having fun playing around with them. <laughs> that guy lived his best life. Also of note is the producer of this film, Harry Novak. Uh, he was something of a legend in the exploitation world, and if you're looking for more films to watch, uh, chasing his name down the rabbit hole is not a bad idea. <laughs> and when you get to the bottom of that hole, tell Bethel Beckler that I said hi. Anyway, enough background, let's check out The Agony of Love. We open on Barbara, played by the lovely Pat Barrington, running away from someone. The music's pretty cool, and the nighttime shots of the city look great. But how do we get to this point? Time for a flashback. Barbara visits her husband, and he's something of a workaholic and all but ignores her. And then we learn what Barbara does in her free time instead of being a stay-at-home June Cleaver type. <laughs> she secretly rents an apartment and pays for it by being a call girl. Now that you've bought me, what do you want me to do? Oh. Ah. <laughs> I don't think June Cleaver ever did that. Unfortunately. But Barbara's unhappy, and she regularly has nightmares and then talks to a psychiatrist about her life and those nightmares. He tries to get her to understand why she is the way she is, but more often than not, she just lashes out in anger. And it's kind of left open to interpretation why she is the way she is. Yeah, maybe if she had a more understanding, involved husband, it would be different. But she doesn't. And that's pretty much it as far as plot goes, even though that's only a couple of sentences. Uh, but that's, that's the movie. She works in her apartment. Sometimes she works with another girl, so there's some variety in those scenes. Um, she talks to a psychiatrist, and she has nightmares. Brandy Barber, Brandy Barber, Brandy Barber, Brandy Barber, Brandy Barber. <laughs> hey, check it out. That's the director, <laughs> William Rossler. <laughs> As the film progresses, there is some drama that leads us back to the beginning of the film where she was running down the street, and I imagine if you think about it for a minute or two, you can figure out what that drama is. So let's talk some highlights. Well, I really like Pat Barrington. Uh, she's got this really cool look. It's like part 50s skinny housewife and part... <laughs> That's a good combination. Sure, she's not the best actor in the world, but... Mmm, combination. I also appreciate how, well, well, how kinky the movie is. You know, we've got this sort of 50s style housewife with some weird debasement issues. Whore. <laughs> Damn, girl, go easy on yourself. We've got some light S&M, there's a tickling scene, there's a foot fetish scene, a shower scene. I mean, none of these kinks are my kinks. Well, that shower scene is pretty nice, actually. Uh, but it's just interesting that we have them there in a movie in 1966. I firmly believe that the TV and Hollywood movies from the Code era gives us an unrealistic view of what America was like in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. The production code was so puritanical, it's easy to come to the conclusion that America itself was so puritanical, uh, but it wasn't. Sure, parts of it were, but as a whole, it wasn't. 
And the sexploitation films, particularly the roughies of the 1960s, show us that America was not as puritanical as shows like Leave it to Beaver would have us believe. And yeah, I'm just kind of grateful for their history-correcting existence. But despite the film's role in broadening our views of what American society was like in the 1960s, it's not perfect. Like a skinny call girl making time with a rotund John, it has some shortcomings. Well, I know I shouldn't complain too much because I know they had to deal with censorship issues at the time, but the sex scenes are really rather silly. I mean, the guys don't even take off their pants, for example. I mean, after the undressing, which is pretty good, uh, it's basically just shots of people hugging. <sighs> Boring. I mean, I know there were very strict limits on what you could show back then, but still pretty boring. I mean, I like how they tried to get around this problem by going harder into some of the more fetishistic things, which are not, you know, body slapping, so you can get away with it. I just wish they would have gotten more in that direction and had less of the hugging. I mean, there's lots of other things they could have done. You know, they could have done some food play or some oil massages or some costumes. Well, I'll just stop there. If I start listing all the sexy things they could have done that are not, you know, slapping, uh, this video will go on for days. Beyond these shortcomings, uh, some people might not like these dream sequences. Uh, personally, uh, even though I don't normally like dream sequences, I didn't mind them here. I mean, it's obvious it's a dream, so we don't get that fake out, uh, which is good because that's what I really hate about dream sequences. They give the film kind of a psychedelic feel, not nearly as psychedelic as William Rossler's Lila, Mantis, and Lace. Uh, he'll do that one a few years after this. Uh, that, that film's pretty crazy. But still, kind of psychedelic. And some people might not like these psychiatry scenes. Uh, you know, they'll maybe find them a bit boring and want the movie to get back to the good stuff, but I kind of like it. It's an interesting take on like a sexploitation film. Is she damaged? Is she just bored being a housewife? Is she unloved by her husband? Uh, can money really fill that gap? Um, yeah, these are interesting questions. I mean, I don't want to give the idea that the movie's super interesting to watch, but it's interesting enough. And so, on my head scale, I say stream it. Pat Barrington is smoking hot as Housewife Gone Wild, there's an interesting enough story, and the whole project was put together by a well-respected science fiction author, who just happened to have a really cool side gig. And there we are. So ends my roughy month of December. I hope you liked it. I hope maybe you found it interesting and maybe I dropped enough names throughout the month that will send you down some fun, interesting paths. If you think there's a film I definitely should have mentioned, uh, be sure to let me know in the comments. Music